Hi, my name is Gabriel and you're watching The Elements of Cinema. Today, we're taking a look at the theme in Fargo, the 1996 thriller directed by the Coen brothers. If you have taken a screenwriting course, you may be familiar with the concept of theme. Theme is often defined as the takeaway from the movie, the life lesson. It's a topic or a subject that gives unity to the story and provokes thought or discussion. Usually, this is accomplished by placing characters with different senses of morality clashing with one another. Needless to say, there will be spoilers. So if you haven't seen this movie, you might want to click out now. Dad's here. It's true that a movie can have many themes, as is the case in Fargo. And it's just one man's opinion that there is a theme in Fargo that supersedes the others. Before I give it to you, let's recap the story real quick. The movie opens with Minnesota car salesman Jerry Lundegaard hiring these two fellas here to kidnap his wife. You want your own wife kidnapped? Yeah. Why, you ask? See, it's not me paying the ransom. The thing is, my wife, she's wealthy. Her dad, he's real well off. Now, I'm in a bit of trouble. So, why don't you just ask him for the money? Well, your fucking wife, you know. See, these are personal matters. Personal matters? Yeah, personal matters. Personal indeed. Uh, okay, Jerry. What we learn is that Jerry is in a bit of a pickle. He had to borrow money to finance vehicles that don't exist. Hey, the loans are in place. I already got the, the, what, the... Yeah, the uh, 320,000 you got. In other words, yeah. fraud. You're all set then. Yeah, but the vehicles that you're borrowing on, I, I just can't read the serial numbers on your application. Maybe if you could just... Uh... Here we see him doctoring documents. And so it becomes obvious that Jerry's moral compass is a little wonky, to say the least. Great. In fact, when the kidnap finally happens, he has to rehearse his emotions. It's my wife. I don't know what to do. It's Jean. Yeah, Wade, I, it's Jerry. I... Does he really not care about his wife? Wade, it's Jerry. I, we gotta talk. It's something... Hard. That begs the question. Is he a gold digger? Did he marry out of self-interest? No, no. See, I... <laughs> I, I don't need a, a finder's fee. I need... Finder's fees, what, 10%? Heck, that's not gonna do it for me. I need the principal. Well, Jerry, we're not gonna just give you $750,000. What the heck were you thinking? If I'm only getting bank interest, I want complete security. Heck, FDIC. I don't see nothing like that. Either. So what's the deal with him? Well, he just wants more. He's not desperate, per se. He has a decent job, a nice house, a beautiful family. Yet, he wasn't happy. Money-wise. Even though Jerry's wife would inherit a lot of money once her father passes on, Jerry has no patience for it. So as you can see, it's not really about basic necessities or future security, because he got those covered. And so, I submit to you that the major theme in Fargo is greed. One clever way that the Coen brothers came up with to drive that point home is with a character who is the dramatic opposite of Jerry. Ends here and then this execution type deal. Police Chief Marge Gunderson. Marge is the breadwinner of her household. While her husband Norman stays home and paints, hoping to get post office stamp contracts, Marge is out there putting food on the table day in and day out, even while pregnant. But she doesn't care. In fact, she is supportive of Norman. I found out the Hauptmans are entering a painting this year. Oh, hon, you're better than them. They're real good. They're good, Norm, but you're better than them. The great thing about Marge is that she is content with what she's got. It's the classic notion that money doesn't buy happiness, which is why most scenes with Marge are about simple living. Jerry and Marge. Mr. Lundegaard? Those are the main characters at each end of the spectrum. But to positively identify greed as the theme, we have to take a look at the other characters and situations. You're the owner here, Mr. In the first plot point, our two criminals are pulled over. I never put my tags on the car. What should be a simple police stop goes south when one of the kidnappers try this. Must have slipped my mind. So maybe the best thing to do would be to take care of that right here. Bribery. What's this, sir? My license and registration. But that doesn't fly. Not in Brainerd. The reason why this scene works so well in service of the theme is because this knucklehead here assumes that everyone is as maladjusted for money as he is. 
Put that back in your pocket, please. And step out of the car, please, sir. In this other scene, we see Jerry discussing the ransom with his father-in-law and his accountant. Well, why, why don't we... Stan, I'm thinking we should offer him a half a million. Okay? Now, come on here. No way, Wade. No way. But then Dad decides to be overprotective. Damn it, I want to be a part of this thing. They said they'd call tomorrow with instructions and it's got to be delivered by me alone. It's my money. I'll deliver it. It escalates badly as he insists on delivering the ransom himself. Who the fuck are you? I got your damn money. Now, where's my daughter? I am through fucking around. Drop that fucking briefcase. No, Gene. No money. Is this a fucking joke here? Bad choice. <laughs> Happy now, asshole! What's with you people? You fucking imbeciles! In this other scene, we see the money being buried. But then, this happens. How the fuck do you split a fucking car, you dummy? With a fucking chainsaw? One of us pays the other for half. Hold on! No fucking way! So is the money lost forever? You betcha. Cause guess what? Greed doesn't pay. And thus, all perpetrators are either killed or taken under custody. And for what? For a little bit of money. And if you were still in doubt, Margie outright dispenses the life lesson here. There's more to life than a little money, you know. Thank you for watching The Elements of Cinema. See you next time. Don't you know that? And here you are. And it's a beautiful day. <laughs>